calculating risk. So this tutorial flows on directly from the previous one and if you skip the mathematics at the end of the previous tutorial then not a worry because right now I will show you the result that we got in the previous tutorial and we'll pick up from there. So the result that we got was that pip value is always equal to loss times 10 and is measured in units of quoted currency. What this means is that if um, your currency moves a certain number of uh, pips and you have a transaction in the market at the time which, is, which has a volume of uh, equal to lots where lots is the variable in our equation then the value of every single pip will be equal to the number of lots in your transaction times 10 and it will be measured in units of course currency. So if you're trading the euro dollar and you're in the market with uh, one lot then every time the currency moves one pip in your favor you're earning 1 times 10 equals to 10 units of quoted currency and in this case the quoted currency is dollars so every time the currency moves in your favor you're earning 10 dollars if you're in the market with a transaction um, with a volume of 10 lots then every time the currency moves in your favor you're earning a hundred dollars so that's a very simple concept and this is a very powerful formula for you to remember and for you to use in your trading. You can always very quickly look at the chart, look at the um, number of lots that a trader is currently in the market with and you can very quickly say um, how much he's earning or losing at every single movement of the currency and let's remember here this is pip value so not points but pips and it's uh, not going to change whether it's a four digit or five digit broker it's always 0 0.0001 okay so now we're going to create an even more powerful formula out of this and it'll be very simple we're going to create a formula to calculate um, our risks on the forex market so let's look at a very um, intuitive formula. This one, this red formula is uh, very straightforward and easy to understand. So the risk, which is on the left, or the amount of money that we can lose in one transaction on, a for, on the Forex market is equal to the stop loss measured in pips. So for example, it's 50 pips that you have a stop loss times the pip value so the amount of money you lose per every pip so for example it's like in our previous case ten dollars per pip so if your stop loss is 50 pips and pip value is equal to ten dollars per pip then you will potentially you can potentially lose five hundred dollars on this transaction if your stop loss is triggered and that means in forex that means that your risk is equal to five hundred dollars so Basically, in this case, risk is the max amount of money you can lose on this particular transaction. And let's remember here that this is all still in the units of quote currency. So that is a very simple formula that does not require derivation because it's just intuitive. Now, how about we put these two formulas together? We know that pip value is lots times 10. And we also know that risk is stop loss in pips times pip value. So let's take pip value from the first formula and plug it into the second one. Let's see what we get. We get risk is equal to stop loss in pips times lots times 10. That's quite interesting, isn't it? And now let's take it a step forward. Let's, from this formula, derive what our lots would equal to if we know risk and stop loss in pips. In that case, lots is equal to risk divided this by the stop loss in pips times 10 and all of this is measured in well risk in this case is measured in units of quoted currency so this is a formula that I'd like to stop our attention on or draw our, our attention to because this is a very very important formula that we will be using throughout our live forex trading in the uh, further tutorials. What this formula tells us is if uh, we know how much we can risk on a particular transaction, we know that we're, we have a certain level of confidence in the market, in our signals, in our 
decision to buy or sell and we know that in this particular transaction we would like uh, we're prepared to risk say for instance fifty dollars and we also know uh, where we want to set our stop loss we know that based on our signals our stop loss has to be set at this certain level then from that we can derive the amount of lots that we have to enter the market with so you all you have to do is you take your risk the amount of money that you prepare to um, lose in a particular transaction if if the market goes against you and you divide that by the number of stop loss number of pips in your stop loss uh, multiplied by 10 and that will give you the amount of lots you should enter the market with and that that's very powerful because um, that's the way you uh, control your risks it's wrong when a trader first thinks oh I'm going to enter the market with one lot or 10 lots or 0.5 lots you can't possibly think that way you should always first think how much you're prepared to lose if the market does go against you and that should be a function of your confidence in your trade confidence in your signals um, whether you're trading with the trend or against the trend and so on um, and then you have to also know where your trading system is telling you to set your stop loss and that's the exact order in which these things done a lot of traders get it wrong and they first think oh I'll, I'll, I'll trade with this amount of lots and um, where should I set my stop loss no you should first think of how much you you're willing to lose if everything goes against you um, then where you're setting your stop loss and um, then you'll get your lots using this formula now an important thing to remember is that risk in this case is calculated in units of quoted currency. So in a lot of cases when the American dollar is the quoted currency and your account is in American dollars, then the quoted currency will be the currency on your account and will be American dollars. But if you're trading um, a currency pair where the quoted currency is not American dollars, remember that you you also have to convert your thinking. You have to convert you'll be thinking of how much you're prepared to lose in your um, account balance currency which is most likely American dollars um, and then you'll need to convert that to the quoted currency and then plug it into the formula I do have to admit that sometimes I forget it myself and uh, further down in these tutorials you'll notice that when we're trading the Australian dollar Canadian dollar I did make that mistake and I didn't convert uh, American dollars into Canadian dollars before plugging into the formula so uh, maybe you can pick up on that mistake and see what the proper calculation should have been. But it didn't make that much of a difference in that particular case because the Canadian dollar and the American dollar are uh, currently quite close in terms of price. However, do remember this uh, for future and when you use this formula, make sure uh, risk is entered in units of the quoted currency. So that's it for today's tutorial. Next time we're going to plunge in straight into live trading on a real account. I hope you're super excited because I definitely am. And I look forward to seeing you then. Until next time, happy trading.